So in this video, let's look in a bit more into inheritance and class inheritance and what that really is. So we've seen in previous videos that we uh, on the world, we have something here called J world and it says extends world. So why would we want to do something like this where we say that J world extends worlds? Why would we want this triangle here saying that J world is kind of a world? because that's what we are saying. So we're saying, for example, an elephant is an actor in this game. We can create classes without doing that. Let's see, I'll create a new class. I'll show you an example. Let's call it dog, for example. I'll click OK. So now we see dog is way down here. Dog is not interrelated to anything here right now. So if I open up dog, uh, we can see that by default it doesn't use Greenfoot. This is one thing. If we look at Elephant, it automatically imports Greenfoot. Um, but also, it's kind of special because we don't inherit anything. So if I create a new dog, uh, it just says something here like zero. We just get a new dog, but we can't see it here because it's not part of our game. So we can kind of create the dog, but it's not really shown on screen because to be shown on screen, the only way we can do that in Greenfoot is making the dog an actor. If we create an elephant, it will by default be able to uh, set it into the world, but we can't add something to the world that is not an actor. And what is special about the actor then? If I open up actor, um, the thing that is very special is this act method. So there is a method called act on all actors that the world will call. This is the only way the world can, com can communicate with actors. So the world wants to, to actually make the game work by calling the act method. So act method is whatever action that that um, specific object has to do. So for example, if I open up potato, I can see that the act method is empty. So that means that the potato can't do anything. If I open up the elephant, it actually moves around and does stuff. Sorry. So, um, so right now uh, we have two things, potato and elephant, that can actually act the dog can't do anything. Um, so it's not very useful in the game. We can have a class outside of the game if we want wanted to do something like calculations or something like that. But other than that, it's not very useful. Um, in order to use something here in Greenfoot, we want to extend one of the main Greenfoot classes, either world or actor. And we also need to import Greenfoot. So this this is the first thing we can do here. We can say import uh, Greenfoot, and then we use like this. So if we look here, we say it's import Greenfoot, and then this asterisk meaning everything from Greenfoot. So we just import everything Greenfoot and now we can extend something. So we could say, for example, dog extends world if it was a dog world and now it goes up here. Or we can say dog extends actor, which is probably more correct. And then it would move down here. So, so this is how we can create classes and make them part of Greenfoot. So now I can actually create a new dog and put it in here. Right now it's just a green foot because that's the default image for something in Greenfoot. If I right click and use the set image, I can find maybe an image of a dog. Let's look. No. Ah, we'll take this one close enough. So now we can actually put in uh, put in a, a dog like that. So 
this is this is the difference between Java classes, normal Java classes, and Greenfoot. We can act. We can add them like this. This pr thing we're doing here is called inheritance. So that means that whenever I inherit something, I inherit. I can inherit all the different actions that an actor can do. So this is actually why if I right click my dog now and I look at the things I inherited from actor, I can see that there is an act method by default. There's the get image, get rotation, get world. All of this stuff comes directly from actor. We cannot change the actor class. That's part of Greenfoot. We can only get this uh, file here. But we can see that all of these, like get image and um, things like this, get rotation, get world, get x, get y, all of this stuff is something that is actually built into the actor. So when I open up the dog, I can actually make it move. So something like a class, um, so we import something, we have this class here, it says public class which means that it's a class. That's why it's uh, why it's this box here. And it says dog and it extends the actor now. So one of the things we need in order for the dog to actually move is we actually need to use the act method. So let's try just uh, briefly um, creating an act method. I just deleted that part. I didn't use that. We need to have a method with the same name as the class. This is called a constructor method and it's the first thing that a class does before anything else. So the next thing, I remove this part here, so I'll just keep it to a minimum. This is the minimum thing I need to have in order for, for the dog to actually work over here. See, we can create it. Uh, we can also remove this because it has uh, that already in the actor, but, but for now, let's just keep it here. So now we have a dog, we can do something. Let's let's try to create the act method here. So the act method, we have to write public void act. And this is what the program will do whenever we click the act button. So if I put something here like move 10, we should be able to get the dog to actually move. So let's create a new dog and act. So now we can actually move the dog or we can do it automatically like that. So this is, this is uh, we inherit from the actor and we get uh, automatically things like move. We can use that automatically now because we extend the actor. If I remove this, we will see that no longer can we use the move method because that is part of uh, of the uh, of the actor, I actually it looks like it does work. It shouldn't. Let's try. Yeah, it needs compiling. Let's just click compile. So we can see now we can't create the. Whoa, something went horribly wrong over here. I better put this back. <laughs> Just try compiling again. Ah, uh, there's some bug in Greenfoot for that. But um, if we if we're not extending actor, we can't move uh, within the world. That is quite. So it works again now. So so that's what we use actor for. There are other things we can do in here. If we press, uh, there's a, a shortcut we can try. Uh, if we write something like like this, sorry, now I can't get it to work. But um, there is uh, different things we can do other than other than the move. If we just go over here and see what it inherits, it we can see that um, we have the get rotation and get world and all of this stuff in here as well. So let's try to uh, do something else. Um, this is called, first off, this is called methods. So we have a class and a class will have different methods inside of it. And these methods is not available on the class by default. So 
when it says here uh, public doc and act it's not available so let's try right clicking here and we can see we can only do new doc here it's only when we have created the doc that we can actually do something uh, with it we have the act method here so we can actually run that method like that and it will move in the world so uh, this one is a special method so that's why it's not shown but what happens is that when I do new doc it will call whatever I, I do in here so that's it sometimes um, things doesn't doesn't live forever so I think in the next video I'll try to show how we can do like a lifespan on these uh, weird docs here but for now you should just know that um, we have classes and classes can extend other classes and we can have methods within these classes which is kind of actions we can do um, to to make things uh, get going inside of the game or whatever we want to do so that's it for this video so the next one I'll try to focus on how to do something where each uh, doc will have different time spans